Hi, I'm Gary Hall, Sr. with the Race Club, and we're honored today to have a special guest from Oak Park, Illinois, a premier coach of an age group swim team there by the name of Ultimate Swim Club. And I'd like you to welcome Pierre Ruffin. Pierre, it's nice to have you on the show with us. Thank you, Gary, very much. I'm glad to be here. Pierre, you bring a lot of unique character and qualities to the sport of swimming, but uh, let me just name a few. First of all, there aren't too many Afro-American swim coaches in America. And when I add that to the list of those Afro-American swim coaches who don't know how to swim, you may be the only one. <laughs> Tell me, how does a guy with your very interesting background that I want you to share with us, how do you get into the sport of swimming and why has it become such a passion for you today? Uh, when my four daughters were younger, they wanted to get into a sport and because I grew up playing basketball and stayed playing basketball for so long, I didn't see that it would be good for them as girls to do any other sport. And I really didn't know what to do with them and I just happened to be in the YMCA after I got through playing some basketball and seen these little kids swimming. So I went home and told my wife, told the kid's mother, let's put them in swimming. She thought it was a great idea, and so we put all four girls in swimming, and that's how I got involved. I used to just be a parent. I would just go there and sit and watch them swim. Every night, watching them, pretty soon I became an official. I wanted to go down on the deck and learn about the sport, stroke and turns. I did that for many years and then all of a sudden one day my daughter says dad we need some help with our strokes I said I don't know how to swim I can't help you well you're gonna have to try dad we need help so I went to the library and I, I never forget this I went in there and I asked the librarian I said I, I need a book on swimming a real good book and she says we have the great book for you it's called the art of swimming and that was my John Consumer's book Mm -hmm. And that was the first book that I ever read on swimming. And that began to change my life. I started reading it and from there I kept working with the kids and I just developed a passion for it over time. And some of the greatest coaches of my era um, were not swimmers. Uh, Don Gambrell, uh, Skip Kinney from Stanford, uh, George Haynes uh, from Santa Clara Swim Club, Sherm Shavur. Uh, Ray Buzzard from Tennessee. Some of the most innovative and the best swimming coaches came from football, baseball, basketball backgrounds. And you, from a basketball background, do you think that's an advantage or a disadvantage to you as a swim coach today? I think when I first started, I, I looked at it as a disadvantage because I didn't know much about the sport. And that's probably why I have such a passion to learn and to be here is because I wanted to learn as much as I could I did not want my kids that I were training to be at a disadvantage when they would go to competition. I didn't want them to feel that they could get better coaching somewhere else from a person who had swim versus a person who didn't swim. And I, it bothered me at first, but over the years of I have studied and I've worked hard, I've come to clinics and even coming to meet you, I've learned so much. No, I don't. I've gotten some very good swimmers, some state champions. And it doesn't bother me anymore. And I'm very, that's the one thing I'm passionate about, that it can be done. Pierre, you grew up in a very difficult environment by most people's standards. You were an orphan. You grew up in a home called uh, Boys Town in Omaha, Nebraska, a very famous, started by Father Flanagan back in, I think, the 40s, yes. if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it had to be a tough upbringing. How has that shaped your character and made you a better swim coach? It's helped me to understand never to give up, that you can be successful in spite of the opposition, in spite of things that might be coming against you. If you have a positive attitude and you set some positive goals and you stick to it, you can be successful. And I'm a, I'm a proof of that. I tell the kids all the time, if I can do it, you can do it. Hang in there, don't give up. Things are gonna be hard, but if you keep working hard and keep progressing and keep improving, the main thing is improving. I kept improving myself. I didn't stay stationary and stop. And I kept improving by meeting people and talking to people and people encouraged me. Yeah. And I just what happened. And it can happen. And you've been very successful. You've got a great age group program up in Oak Park, Illinois, just outside of Chicago. Uh, over 100 swimmers, right? Yes. Tell them how many assistant coaches you have. None. One coach, over 100 swimmers. 
And you know everyone inside and out, don't you? Yes, I do. I made it a study because it's important that the kids know that you know them, that they're just not a number or just another kid on the block. And I've made it my duty to study each kid, to know their names, hug all the girls, pat hands with the boys, talk to their parents. I remember when I first started into coaching, one of the biggest things I used to hear other coaches say is if we could just keep the parents out of it. And one thing I learned early, the reason why the parents are concerned is because it's their child and they're looking for you to give their kid something. And when they don't see it, they look at it as an investment. I'm putting an investment in my kid. I want to know why the investment, I'm not getting a return. So I have learned to address their concerns, not be afraid of their concerns, address their concerns, talk to them about their concerns, and reaffirm to them that my job to them is that I'm going to give a return on your investment into your child, into this club, as me as their coach. And it's been successful. You know, today coaches uh, are focused a lot on details, and, and they stand up on the deck, and they've got two watches, one in each hand, and they're getting splits on everything and distance per stroke and stroke rates and all kinds of details. And I thought it was pretty interesting, your approach to the sport of swimming as a coach on deck. What is it you don't carry when you go out there? No watches, no stop clocks, <laughs> none. And what are you doing during a race? I'm screaming and hollering and telling them, go, get the meadow out, move it. My favorite thing is move it, move it. it sounds like a, a movie. I think my granddaughter <laughs> says, uh, move it, move it. <laughs> always, move it, move it. Get the lad out. I'm always hollering that. And what you're also doing is you're watching your swimmers. Watching and, them. And, and seeing every stroke that they take. One of the officials, I'm sorry, Gary. One of the officials told me, you're the only coach I see that watches every swimmer. You have good ones, you're bad ones, you're standing up there. You, all the officials say you're one coach who are at the deck for your kids. Pierre, you're very fortunate in having a sponsor. I know a lot of teams uh, across America would, uh, are envious of, of you because you have a great sponsor. Tell us a little bit about Athletico and your sponsor of your team. Uh, I met uh, Mary Ann and Margaret, uh, Mary Ann Kaufman and, and Michael uh, Kaufman, Mr. Kaufman, about 13 to 14 years ago when we were at the Oak Brook Park District running a swim team. They brought their daughters to me, uh, Fotini Kaufman. She was five years old at the time. And since now she's 17, I have their other daughter on the team, Margaret, which is, she's 13, and then I have little Christina. Well, when I was at the Park District coaching for a while, there was an impasse and, um, between the club and the Park District, wanting to go from a competitive team to just having fun team. And I said, well, I'm just not in for that. So they said, well, we're going to have to let you go. I said, fine. So when Mary Ann and some of the parents found out that I was about to leave, they said, why don't we start our own club? And if we start our own club, we would like for you to be our coach because you've done such a great job with all of our kids. Would you be willing to accept the job, even though it, in the beginning it may not be what you always wanted? I go, yeah, I'd be glad to do it. And so with that, they says, we'll sponsor the club, we'll get you going, and then and you can go on from there. And that's how that's happened. Well, it's, it's a great thing to have, and it's great to see companies like them come in and support uh, the swimming and swimming clubs. And the heart of Great Swimming America, I always believe, start with clubs like Pierre's. Um, last question, and, and this is just uh, one for, for us, and it's a bit of a selfish one, but it's been a really a blast for us to work with you. Pierre came down from our park for a week of, of uh, just observing the race club, first coach we've really had for this sustained period. We've had many, many coaches who've come for a day or a session, but he's come down for a whole week. Share with us your experience here. It's been absolutely fabulous. That's all I can say. I, from the day I came in here, I felt like I was one of them. I've been like a little kid in a candy store. I mean, you don't understand. Most of you probably don't understand. I've never swam before, so I didn't come down here afraid to jump in and be with these guys. I came down here wanting to learn, 
and even argue back and forth about different things. But you know what? It's been tremendous. And then I met Michael, Michael Richard, I'm sorry, Richard, his, Richard Hall, his son, has been marvelous to me. I watched him swim. We've had long talks together. The other two coaches, it's just been a great experience for me. One will I'll never forget. And, I, you know, what more can I say other than that? It's been great. And I wish more coaches would come down and not spend a day, but spend a week down. You can't learn anything in a day. I agree, but you know what? It's it's uh, we've learned from Pierre as well as trying to teach him some of the race club techniques and strategies and systems. But we've learned a lot from Pierre. You know, one of the most important things I learned from him, and, and this is in a day and era when when uh, so many coaches know, especially at an age group level, that uh, one bad swim and their parents are taking them off the team, uh, switching teams, or going from here to there, trying to find instances of success. Um, but Pierre doesn't have that. Pierre has a, an extremely loyal group of swimmers. They don't switch. They love him. And the reason they love him is because he pays attention and he gives every girl a hug, good swimmer, bad, after a swim, and he shakes the hand of every of, of his boy swimmers after every swim, good or bad, and he tells them how great they are. And that's what makes Pierre such a special person as well as a great coach. Pierre, it's great to have you, and we look forward to seeing you back here in the Keys. And I hope next time you'll stay long enough for me to teach you how to swim. No, just take me out on your boat. <laughs> That's what I want. I'd rather have that. And don't push you in. No, <laughs> if you do, I'd be okay. I have my life jacket on. So then you can push me in. All right. You got a deal. All right. <laughs>